yeah. to stream. Guys, I have so much to rant about, but first, white people. And, and we're white, so it's not racist for us to say that white people are awful. Your world, your way. White people. <laughs> Is it your world? Well, your moment. Yeah. Oh, your mm. moment, yeah. Hmm. Mm. They, re mm. they really know uh, how things work, I guess. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. there's so many white people in here. It's just, ugh. We're waiting for a few people to show up uh, while we look at White People Magazine. Yeah. And if you're just joining us and you haven't seen this before, for some reason, I started getting these Departures magazines. I never signed up for it. I don't know how it happened. It just They just started showing up. Make sure the address is not on the bottom of this thing. Ugh. I got you, fam. Fam? Yep. Fam! What are you, 22, talking to your people on Twitter? It's your boy. <laughs> Sorry, boy. Boy. All right, everybody. Yeah. For, for real, though, it's your boy. It's the holiday issue. I don't know why we got this now. Oh, because it's been in my trunk for a couple of months. Oh, okay. A couple few months. Yeah. Um, and also, I don't want to really get started until my coffee is cool enough to in, uh, imbibe. What's this? It's just the Dolce & Gabbana ad. Which one's Dolce and which one's Gabbana? I don't know. I think that's Dolce and that's, that's Gabbana. That's Gabbana. <laughs> yeah. Here's Dolce, there's Gabbana. Right oh, there. is this, the, is this the holiday issue? This is Dolce and Gabbana Save Christmas. I've seen that movie. Oh, yeah. Bring What's happening to this I'm thing? I'm putting it up here. You're so, so much louder than me last week. Okay, fine. That's you because that's because my voice naturally projects more. You have a better pie cavity. Yeah. And I have better ocular cavities for seeing across the room. Mm -hmm. Eagle vision and... Yeah, I and can't see across anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone rooms. Yeah. That's what these, these here glasses aren't just to make me be taken more seriously as a... Journalist and person on the internet. This is dangerous it's because I actually need them to see glasses. Seize. Yeah, they do make you. They give you like a plus two to intelligence. It's true. Well, uh, that's why. That's why I have the beard too because I work in tech. So plus two to charisma. Like if plus anybody, if I if I want people to take me seriously, uh, because I'm a larger guy, I have to have a beard because otherwise people will be like, mm, I don't know. There's no <laughs> facial hair on there. I don't think we can do business with this guy. High class honkies. He knows what's up. All yep. right, guys. Let's get dangerous. Where's the button for the start? Discord. We got some people from Discord hanging out in here. Hi, Discord friends. What's Welcome going on, on everybody? Board. All right, so we're going to talk about some technology stuff, but hey, Rigor. the thing that I'm really going to... I've got a lot of stuff to rant about today. I'm, I'm on the, the war path a little bit. Oh, nice. I'm really uh, upset with Bethesda, with what they're doing with the, uh, the new Elder Scrolls game that came out for mobile. Blades. We'll talk about Blades. And we're, you, just, you guys want to stay tuned because I'm going to get on a soapbox and put that on top of a high horse. On and your pillar. On my pillar. Yep. It'll be a high horse standing on a pillar. <laughs> On top of a soapbox. Delicate balancing act. And it's going to get really rough, so. Yeah. There's that. But first off, we'll talk about some hardware. Um, and the reason I wanted to bring this up is because we actually saw this in action and everything's under NDA. But I can say that. We saw it in action. And it is the most ridiculously fast thing. So what they've done here is they've taken Optane memory and they've also taken um, some NAND uh, memory and thrown all of this onto the same M.2. So you have the Optane speeding up the already fast you know, SSD, so it's gonna be ridiculously fast. Sweet. Now, it didn't seem that much faster just when you're like writing one file at a time and stuff like that, but when it comes to opening up multiple programs at the same time, it was faster than anything that I've ever seen, yeah. so I can't wait to get my hands on Especially some of this. like Adobe programs and stuff that are notorious for taking a thousand years to load. Yeah, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't actually believe how fast that uh, Photoshop opened, but they also they were opening like Photoshop Word and a whole bunch of things at the same time. I don't mm -hmm. think we're allowed to talk about any of this stuff because they were also showing us some Optane memory that's like on the horizon and stuff like it's that. It's cool looking. It's really cool. Can't. That's all I can say. Much. Yeah. Speaking of things that are on the horizon, uh, who's going to get Zen two? And there's a lot of misinformation out there about what the Zen two stuff's going to be. Some people are saying this chart is real. Some people are saying this chart is false. So, yeah. Who's the sword swinger right now? Uh. La Cody. Are we going to talk about the black hole? Of course we're going to talk about the black hole. I don't think we have an article about the black hole. Oh, no. There's so few and far between right now. Mm. It's barely ever talked about. I mean, we could talk about the black hole. I just thought the black hole was like this 
it's so out there and like, uh, like literally, but I mean like it's, yes. <laughs> it's just like all over the news right now. So um, I figured everybody already knows about the black hole, and I'm not a pretty sure we have. Yeah, no, we don't have any I'm black hole. Pretty stuff. sure we have a black hole picture up here somewhere. I, I don't think so. Uh, I want to feel like we do. Whoa. I don't think we have a black. Sorry, guys. No okay. black holes for you guys. Fine. I think there might be. Black hole is so hot right now. <laughs> oh my god, that black hole is so great right now. Oh! 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 We have a black hole thing. Look at this. Look at that article that you put towards this list. I was half asleep when I made the list. Mm. I don't remember anything about black mm. holes. Have you seen the rendering of the black hole without the blur? Like the way it looks. It looks like it's a much more fine line around the black hole. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Pretty neat. Have been yeah. in science. Well, you it's probably the have turned the best verification that we have that, that black holes aren't mm -hmm. just the theoretical scribblings on a blackboard. That, music. Yes. Look at that black hole simulation. Yeah, the simulation is what you need. Yeah. We all understand from a mathematical point of view that black I've also seen the uh, NASA is now looking for the uh, the blue there exit portal. The blue exit portal. Yeah. <laughs> That's what NASA is <laughs> looking for right now. Anyway, so you guys have got us already talking about the black hole. If you hole. put it right in front of the other black hole, black then you can just go <laughs> through the two of them over and over again. Can you do sexual favors to yourself? Obviously. This is, let's get serious here. That would be the first thing people would do once they had access to portal technology like in Portal. I'd want to know, guys, how many of you guys would, um, would use the portal gun for self-serving reasons? We're not moving on until you guys answer this question. Yeah. This is extremely important. This is we ask the tough questions here on the show. Don't be shy. You're among friends. You yeah. can tell you can tell us. We're so not, would you? We're not creepy at all. Would you? No. 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 It would make me. I, you know, if you, I feel like if I did that, I would just immediately feel crippling loneliness immediately afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, and I would lay there and be like. Was it worth my crippling loneliness? I invested so much money in buying this portal gun. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Ace Me says I'd use it to pee or go get coffee. I mean, that's, yeah. Pee or go get coffee mm -hmm. or both at the same time. That's okay. Uh, that's like the, the Simpsons episode where Homer gets the teleporter and uses, tries to use it to pee through. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely would, would put one like near the fridge or something. Yeah. Like, just, so just... That sounds like a terrible idea. Why? Because then you'll like, it'll be too easy. There should be some barriers to going to get snacks. Like, if you're playing video games, there should at least be the barrier of having to get up and walk. <laughs> like, it's, if it's too easy to get snacks, you're going to have more snacks than you should. That's why I don't have a maid. Oh, yeah, because it's so much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, just, I just yell at them, bring me a whatever the fuck, and then, yeah. Yeah, Cryptic88 says skip the traffic to work. Set up one in your house, one oh in your god. office. Oh my god. They were tearing up the road today, and there was just a gas leak or something, so it took me forever to get here. It took me forever to get here, too, but that's because Pacific Northwest drivers are shit, and uh, none of them understand how speed limits work. <laughs> I could, I, we could go on about that, but we have to play Dungeons and Dragons in 45 minutes, guys. Sorry. Yeah. We're actually playing Star Trek Adventures. Oh, sorry. Week. Star yeah. Trek Adventures, yes. Trying a bunch of different systems. Um, so we'll go through. I want to go through some of this quickly so I can get to uh, ranting about Bethesda, right? <laughs> Is the edge of the portal a sharp edge? If you touch the edge, do you dismember yourself? Mm, no, I think mm. it's a... It looks like... I don't know. It's it's gaseous. It's gaseous. You're... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mike Kiki 95 is here in a legible font this time. Holy good crap. job, buddy. Nice. Woo! All right, so I also I want to just quickly say good on the house for restoring net neutrality if it would, after it was dismembered against the will of the people. Because Egypt Pie didn't listen to any of the people and said, oh, it's, it's garbage. Um, now the thing is going to have to go to the Senate, which uh, means Mitch McConnell's going to be like, this does not please my corporate overlords. This is bullshit. And he's going to, like, destroy mm. it. So we'll see what happens once Mitch McConnell gets his hands on it. Uh, no, we are not going to be streaming us playing Star Trek. Uh, some of the members of our D&D group don't want to do streaming, so we're respecting their wishes. <laughs> Or maybe, you'd, it, I think yeah. they said they, they were kind of okay with it. Yeah. But I was like, I want to have a time where I just have some fun and not put my life online. Mm -hmm. That was that. Maybe another game. Yeah, who knows. So, the retail apocalypse is now. 
Yeah. Uh, and I, let's say that a bunch of building or a bunch of different uh, buildings, her, a bunch of different companies will be closing down by like 2026. They've got a bunch um, of them filing for bankruptcy this year, like pay, pay less and Jimboree and a lot of like just middle of America mall stuff is going under. Yeah. The hell is a Jimboree? I don't know. Okay. I think it's kind of like a... Guys, what's a Jimboree? Anyone? It, how many mall stores are going to close? Do you think Hot Topic's going to survive? I mean, the Hot Topic in my mall back home in Massachusetts is gone, so... so Hot Topic's gone? Yep. Really? I mean, I mean the, right, somebody... the Berkshire Mall, to be fair, the Berkshire Mall was always, like, slowly dying anyways, so now it's just, like, in its death throes, and, like, when you open the doors, you hear the death rattle and everything. <laughs> Gymnastics festival. <laughs> um, I think we need, to, uh, we need to save Hot Topic, so I'm going to make the Crow Part 6 or whatever number they're on. Mm. We'll make the Crow Part 6. Uh, It'll have a My Chemical Romance soundtrack. Oh, God. Yep. With a Nine Inch Nails uh, remix with yep. uh, Gwen Stefani. And uh, the, the Crow will only wear uh, black T-shirts with skulls on them. <laughs> Unless he's wearing his dragon shirt with yep. the shiny dragons. Right. <laughs> And then sometimes he'll change into button-down Dragon Ball Z shirts as well. Holy shit, you just described everyone I hung out with in the 90s. Oh, God, you guys were losers. Uh, I'll admit this right now in front of everyone. Uh, I used to work at Hot Topic back in the day. I even managed a Hot Topic back in the day. So, Really, they're all gone now. And, and yeah. they're, they're, they've, they've rebranded. And they're now only selling uh, skimpy clothes, and they're called Thought Hopic. Well, we'll just let that settle there for a minute <laughs> before we move on. Uh, you got something to read over there. Hang on, we got a we got a wall of text here from Mike Hickey, a female that wears in. in okay, wait, a female that wears tight clothes to bars and clubs. A jamboree carries a positive disposition so much that the ah. Uh, Scroll up. Okay, yeah, this tiny of the screen is not working out yeah. for us. We got to get a bigger. So screen. much of the combination for look style and attitude make her seem like fun, not exceeding five point. Five feet, five inches. Age typically ranging from 18 to 25. Although there is no true age limit, height... Not, what the hell? Is this like the... Is this like the... It's the, the rules urban, for Jim, I think it's the, the rules for Jamboree. Yeah. What? Whoa. Whoa. <clears throat> They're all going to be shopping at yeah. Thought Hopic. Yeah, pun subbed. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. China's developing energy weapons. Yes. Uh, it's, it's official here. You know why it's official? It's official yeah. because we want to develop energy weapons. Yeah. So and if China and Russia are developing any energy weapons, we can build giant lasers. So so take a look at... Uh, Stop this shit. Fuck off. So take a look at the title. Shanahan, Hanahan, Hanahan. Uh, China is deploying directed energy weapons. Further down in the article, it's quoted him as saying, China likely, emphasis added, is pursuing laser weapons to disrupt, disgrade, or damage satellites and I mean, their they, sensors. They like, probably are. Yeah. <laughs> China's on clay. China's on their way to be the Protoss. <laughs> okay, so energy weapons at this point in time require an enormous amount of energy. And, I mean, I guess we could just suck it out of the sun with enough solar, but they are building some huge solar plants. I don't know. Um, this is really just a way for us to build more weapons. And if we can weaponize outer space, and, and like, if you read on here, like, a lot of the stuff is rhetoric about, like, the space is the next frontier for war. Yep. And it becomes a bunch of warmongering, but that's how shit gets done in America. It's like, okay, we can go to outer space. That's really cool. But can we blow up the fucking moon? Yes. How much money do you need? We'll blow yeah. up the moon. Can we blow up each Should other we? in space? Can, like, we? <laughs> that's... can we go to space and shoot people that don't look like us? Yes. Money. Snipers on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking for terrorists. Yep. Oh, Just sit God. there with a giant telescope and a rail gun and fire 20 minutes before it would even get in line. You know. <laughs> Laser yeah. snipers. We've also got to take down their satellites because that's how they communicate. It's true. We're just... Now we have to have... All the satellites now that are being launched are going to have to have countermeasures. That's just the thing that they're going to have to have. Little dust clouds that spread yeah. out, and like and like those 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 missiles that ships launch in cool sci-fi things when they're being attacked by other missiles, and they launch off other smaller heat seekers, so they blow those up instead, and and fucking laser shields, and 
people going Super Saiyan on each other and shit. Guys, we live in a dystopia uh, full of warmongering rulers who work for corporate interests. That's pretty much what's yeah. going on. And Mike just said Assange needs to be released. Not only does Assange need to be released, Chelsea Manning needs to be released. Snowden needs to be pardoned. Hmm. Are we... Are we Anybody, anybody, any, uh, anybody angry yet? I've had a lot of like angry, almost military types be like, those cowards are hiding from justice. Oh, uh, yeah. Apparently after, after last Thursday's show, we are a bunch of liberal, uh, SJW. What do we do? It's something we talked about last week. Did we say that? Uh, there we were a bunch so of, a bunch of comments in our YouTube that were a bunch of, of liberal gay SJW, like... You know, did, did lefty we... boys that are just there to, like, ruin tech for everybody. Uh, guess... So that's going to be our new slogan. <laughs> I guess we must have said something like people uh, all deserve good things or something. Who I don't knows? know. What did we say? Like, oh, everyone should be uh, treated equally. And then they were like, wait a minute. Whoa, look at these guys over here. Yeah. That, that really steps on my toes because I'm white and I really like being ahead. Is that, yeah. I, don't know. Uh, I don't know. But anyways, people were angry. So uh, I'm guys, sure I'm that, a... that'll... Get us more this week. Yeah, I'm a humanist, and I don't actually like uh, social justice warriors, so mm. I feel like they're detracting from a lot of the things that we need to be focusing on. Rather than identity politics, we've got real issues that, I mean, identity politics do, do affect people because there are hate crimes and shit like that, but there's sure. some really big picture stuff that you miss when you spend all your time fighting over what name you should call someone and, like, and, and that kind of stuff. It's like, guys, yes, just... Leave people alone, mind your own fucking business, and then let's get back to the real issues at hand. Like, if everything could be solved. If Lizard people, people are de are controlling our government. Exactly! Jesus God, why isn't anyone doing something about the lizard people? And if they could mind their own business and stop shooting each other with rifles because they don't yeah. agree over, like, religion and skin color and sexual orientation, mm -hmm. then we could fight off the lizards and the people making the frogs gay! <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Anyway, <laughs> where were we? Speaking of China, <laughs> what about freaking gay frogs? Gay frogs! Uh, Alex Jones is going to be so, back on YouTube, but that's another story. But not only, only for one video. Mm. Uh, so Chinese scientists have uh, put human brain genes into rhesus monkeys and shown that they are, in fact, smarter. They uh, It took their brains a little longer to develop, much like a human's child's brain does. And uh, they were actually showing that they were able to solve um, multi-step puzzles, color, shape, remembering puzzles like that, better than your Joe-ass rhesus monkey. We're getting into some weird territory right mm -hmm. here. And China's always pushing the boundary in the sense that, like, the rest of the world's like, here's where we're going to do things ethically. And then China just shows up and like, oh, yeah, we've already done, like, five things past what you guys said yeah. was, was, eth was ethical. So... Yeah, this is this is weird, but you know what else? In these findings, if they can put human genes into monkey brains, I bet they could put monkey brains into human brains and then make humans more subservient and also useful at a younger age. There you go. Don't think that didn't go on. Uh, how do? What's the word there? That that did not go unnoticed. That's what I was trying yeah. to say. Don't think we didn't think about that. Because we know, you know, we know. <laughs> Reese's Pieces Puzzles. What? Reese's Pieces Puzzles. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, there are so many implications here that we could get into a whole show on this, mm. and, and that's not what we're going to do right now. Yeah. But know that China did it first, as usual. I'm going to be in China in about a week. Oh, no, no show next week, uh, guys. I'll be out of town in China. No, it can't talk yet, Cryptic. As soon as it can, though, it's going down. And, um, oh, for anyone to ask, because I've had some people, like, yell at me for not, like, being, like, as stern as I want to be on China. I like to go visit China. That's the end of that conversation. And I'm going to compromise and be pragmatic and mm. not say things on YouTube that would make it difficult for me to go to China. Because I like going to China. It's a very educational thing to do, and it grants me a different perspective. And I like that. So, that's it. All I'm saying about China, I've said, you know, things that I think are scary about China, things that I think are, you know, I don't like about China, but yeah. <laughs> Zellmark says you like to visit China and come back. Both, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's preferred. I'm not going to apologize for being pragmatic <laughs> in that sense. Um, All right. Anyway, speaking of, over, we've got a lot of Overlord stuff. Yeah, we do. There's I could totally see here. a time in which so you do could you guys be sitting feel at home comfortable with your Amazon Alexa um, your pr- pr- speaker device from, and you from could Amazon say, or Alexa, just like saying to your Alexa, my you prescription. On that. Why and is our three... desktop audio on? I don't know. It's really weird. Get not on. There we go. Okay. All right, I think desktop audio is off now. Do mm-hmm. you guys feel comfortable just saying to Alexa, hey, Alexa, uh, refill my prescription th- strength uh, hemorrhoid medicine? Do they make that? I guess they do. It's super glue, basically. Yeah. Okay, ordering new ass cream. Like so, that's <laughs> where Amazon's headed. They're going toward that, where you can just talk to that, and then three hours later, someone will show up with your opioids or whatever the hell you order. Okay. But I mean, like, like does that mean you have to... Does that mean you're going to have to, like, subs- like put in your prescription with oh, yeah, Amazon you're... first? Oh, yeah. Because otherwise people will just be able to be like, hey, oh, yeah, yeah. I need all kinds of painkillers. <laughs> Come on, Amazon. Like, Yeah, no, you can't, you can't do that. But here's the other thing that goes with this. So if you can just, like, go onto Amazon Alexa and be like, hey, Amazon, Alexa, give me some of this stuff. Now we know that there are Take, uh, thousands of Amazon workers listening to what you tell Alexa. Now they're doing this because, you know, like Alexa needs help updating the algorithm. If you say like Cheryl Crow, they know not to show you pictures of crows. You know, like Mm. the humans like listen to that, like, oh, they're looking for the artist, not a a crow. Sure. And and whatever the hell a Cheryl is. Uh, Cheryl the crow, maybe. I don't know. Mm. But, you know, they need to do stuff like that. So that was their justification. But they're also listening all the time to little snippets of different things. They... Some of the reports here said people have heard people like singing very badly off key in the shower, stuff you don't want to get, you know, other people to hear. They've heard people have arguments. They've heard people have sex. Um, <clears throat> how do you guys feel knowing that an actual human is listening to you? No. Do you guys care? Is that like just like, oh, they don't know who I am. It doesn't, they don't know my username or anything like that. They don't know that I'm a real person. They just, is it, is there enough of a, is there enough of a barrier there for you to feel comfortable Ordering very personal prescriptions and having sex and arguing with your friends and stuff. Talking about your... All at the same time. Talking about your cryptocurrency passwords from yeah. Coinbase and stuff. Now I'm just going to have to like leave porn on in the background so the people at Alexa <laughs> think I'm cool. God, this guy like, never stops. Damn, this guy gets laid all the time. <laughs> Shit, this guy is the coolest. Like that's, yeah. The coolest plumber ever. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy just constantly has, like, plumbers and pizza delivery guys coming over. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think a lot of people who have gone down the road of just giving away their, uh, I guess, their privacy and their security for convenience. I mean, like, I, I don't know how, how much is that going to affect them later in life? Are they, mm-hmm. are they ever going to care? Is it going to change the... Is it going to change the way that they act? Is it going to change the things that they say, knowing that there's a robot listening or a human listening? Is it going to affect what they do and say and what happens when like you know further down the road where certain things are criminal as as they are in china you know like if you say certain things well you can get in trouble with the government if you go on social media and say certain things you can get in trouble with the government if someone overhears you or records you saying certain things you can get in trouble Mm -hmm. is that going to spill over into other governments as they try to exercise more control we've already got the nsa looking at everything is it going to become more of a dystopia and are they going to start using these devices uh to incriminate people and be like, oh, everything you guys say in your house can be subpoenaed. Like, there's, there's a lot of things to consider about that. Uh, Mike Hickey says, when someone says, I don't care about privacy, I have nothing to hide. It's the same exact thing as saying, I don't need free speech, I have nothing to say. Privacy is so important. We could, that's another thing we could go on with for like an hour like and, and mm-hmm. expand upon. That we already did. Yeah, we talked about the black no, hole. We're on there. We're on that, so. Yeah. Unless you don't want to talk about this. Yeah, let's skip forward. All right. That's, that's all like... Uh, speculation yeah all right guys um thanks very much for watching what shirt am i wearing today oh one of our cyberpunk shirts so um i'm wearing a D shirt that's not on our site thank you guys for supporting the <laughs> store and uh, grabbing some stuff hope you guys enjoy the the mouse and the mouse pads and everything but be sure to head over to epicpants.com we need to get some new stuff in there I was just uh talking to john the guy who runs the store he's like when are you guys gonna make a new shirt i was like maybe we should make some new shirts so mm. you guys want some new shirts It'll be cooler than everything else. Yeah. Um, let me know. Anyway, epicpants.com. That's enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Is anyone enthusiastic about this? Yeah, so YouTube is going to develop interactive content a la Netflix's Bandersnatch. Uh, <laughs> still love saying that word. Uh, like, at this point... Choose your own adventure videos. If you haven't seen Bandersnatch, it's um, yeah, it's a choose your own adventure show. And none, nothing ever has a good in, good ending. I, I, someone told me that there was a good ending, and I can't. I was like, mm. I'm not gonna sit around. So, and try to so find like, it. do you do you do you trust YouTube enough at this point? Do, are you like you've done too much damage at this juncture, YouTube? Or is this YouTube you, is a dumpster fire? Yeah, <laughs> I don't trust anything they do. YouTube is a dumpster fire in the middle of a land uh, like a landfill fire. Yeah, and you know what's funny is they've policed. A lot of the things that we can do, uh, and they censor things. If we put certain things in the title, they're going to censor us. They're going to demonetize us. Mm. If we curse too much, their algorithm is going to be like, foul mouth, jackasses. And then they go and release. These fucking guys, yeah. And, well, it's funny. It's because they go and release their own their own content. And it's like rated R, like lots of cursing. And oh, like yeah. like Advertising everywhere. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, you guys told us you wanted to be family friendly. Then you release some of your own content that is co clearly rated R. So what the fuck, YouTube? YouTube, because fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to make sure the money is in their pocket and not yeah. ours. All right. All right, I'm not sure how I feel about this, this I'm, live action Lion I'm King I'm not sure thing. how I feel about this either. This is... And Lion King was not my favorite Disney movie growing up as it was most people's favorite Disney movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it, like most people like this was the, the, the movie. It was the only Disney movie to get two separate runs in a theater before it went into second run theater. Damn. Yeah. Uh... People are calling it live action. This is CG, guys. Yeah, this, this is this, this is, is a not cartoon. Live this, this is, is this, a cartoon. This is another. This is CG. <sighs> like all the other live action uh, recent Disney movies, they're pretty much just CG. Good CG though. Yeah, like so. I feel like this is just kind of a a lazy trend that Disney has gotten behind of just being like, let's take movies that we know were successful and just. CGI wipe them and we'll be fine. You mean what the entire industry of Hollywood does? It's like basically, but they're they're just Hollywood. taking shit that they've already done and just repolishing like classic turds. And this you is know. the entire Disney formula, though. Yeah. And if you look at like Disney, they 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 own Star Wars, they own Marvel, they own Fox all these, now. They own all these big entities, and they just keep going into the past and finding things that are guaranteed successes, and then throwing lots of money at them because that is how you make money when it comes to Hollywood. You cannot take risks yeah. that you don't know are going to pay off. So we're getting just rehashes of the same thing over and over and over again. That's pretty much the way Hollywood works. And some people like it because I don't know. they feel good and they get in touch with their childhood. But Seth Rogen? Yeah, he's Pumbaa. What? And I'm, that's, I'm always worried when I, when I hear Seth Rogen's in something because it's going to be... No, nope. it's, it's just going to be Seth Rogen pretending to be something. It's not Seth Rogen being a character. It's mm, like, no, nope. like, like even in that recording that wasn't playing the, the sound for you. But right. even in that Oops. part when he they're singing uh, the lion sleeps tonight at the end. And it's Billy Eichner right. is his is his cohort. Okay. Um, the angry man on the street. John uh, Oliver's in it. Yeah, he's Zazu. The bird, the British right. bird. Yeah. But like, so, so like. Seth Rogen is always just kind of himself, and even in that, it's like it's them singing the song, and he's laughing in it. Like he's trying, he's doing the oh wee mo, oh wee mo, oh wee mo. What? Like, like the dude he, can't even record his own audio without fucking laughing at himself. Like he's so fucking good. It's because he's like, stoned all the time. He's been playing he's, the same character since Freaks and Geeks. He's always like, stoned, and he's always <laughs> doing the little stoner giggle. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Like, but but that's, that's, that's he just plays Seth Rogen and everything. He never actually like <laughs> who's Timon and Pumbaa? Right? Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner. Oh wait 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 wait. That's Seth Rogen and Billy Eichner. Okay, that's, yeah, that, that's 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 what I was clear about. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> they they they're never. Gonna I'm have, a warthog. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's never yeah. going to be anything close to the original as no. far as the cast goes. I don't think. But yeah, whatever. Nathan whatever. Lane was the best Timon. Sorry, Billy Eichner. <laughs> Okay, I've been saying this for a while. We're going to move right along and not even really talk about this, but this is an interesting article here on Extreme Tech from Joel Rushka, who was Rushka. obviously playing games before Steam came out. The problem is, is a lot of people have were not playing games <laughs> before Steam, so Steam is all they know. Hi, Futeki360. Welcome aboard. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on the whole Epic Games thing. Yeah. We, we talk about that enough. You guys ready for a rant? Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, go ahead. 
Are you, are you ready? Yep. Should I get some more coffee before I do this rant? I'm getting more coffee. We're gonna right. we're gonna rant now, guys. But I'm getting coffee first. And how about a commercial? Don't give me that so so soda. That same old cola. I want the Oh, God. How about now? How about now? How about now? All right, so we're going to talk about the Elder Scrolls Blades because they made a yeah. pretty full-featured... Well, pretty full-featured. They made a pretty large Elder Scrolls game for mobile. It looks pretty good. I've heard it plays pretty well. But there's a uh, disturbing trend here, and they've taken all of the things that make mobile gaming awful, and they've turned it up to 11 with this. So this article on Forbes from someone who's played this game for 20, 25 hours, played it for a week. Yeah, they are very angry about it. I would be too. Which is fine. Yeah, it's it definitely <laughs> ran 30 graphics. This is an upgrade. Yeah. I'm sorry, do you want something? Oh, fine, you keep ranting. I'm going to go. You go, go yeah, you, now it's a thing. No, all right, I'm going to rant now. for a while, guys. Yeah. All right, so we're just going to first off go through some of the ways that Bethesda has monetized this game in very nefarious ways. Now, first off, when you go and get chests and you complete dungeons and stuff, the chests don't just open up. If you get like a basic chest, it'll open up in five seconds. But if you get a silver chest, those take three hours to open and a gold chest takes six hours to open. Who has that kind of time? I guess you have to like put your phone down and just wait to open the chest or something. Ugh. But the thing is, is like, so, so as you're playing the game, if you get lots and lots of chests, they stack up and you just have all these chests waiting to open. It's like, Five hours for the silver chest, then another five hours, then like you're waiting for all these chests to open. Or you can pay like a few cents or a dollar, depending on the style of chest that it is, and then you can open the chest. And there's a hard limit. So if you have, you know, the maximum amount of chests, you can't get anymore. So let's say you're in a dungeon and you just, you know, beat the dungeon and there's a gold chest there and you're like, I want my reward. I just played through this game and I really want to be rewarded because that's how games work. You play, you beat the boss, you get a new item. Well, there's a gold chest there, but your inventory's full and your next chest doesn't open for six hours. So now you have to sit there and wait for your other chests to open before you can even pick up that chest. You can't leave it there unless you decide to pay to open some of your other chests and then it'll open up room in your inventory. Now, above and beyond this, there are bigger chests, like legendary chests and stuff like that. They give you items that are better than anything that's in your inventory and there's frequent pop-ups or frequent reminders being like, hey, you guys know you can get a, an, elder, a, an elder chest or a legendary chest, right? With some really rare goods in them, but you gotta pay for that. And they're, they're like, they said like five, ten, and thirty dollars. So you can like you be buying chests for like ten to fifteen dollars, paying for these weapons. And here's the thing that's crazy: he played for twenty to twenty-five hours and never saw one of these really rare chests in the game, like one of the legendary chests or the whatever it is they call them, the legendary or elder chests. Never actually saw one in the game. Maybe there are some way later in the game, but the only way he could get them and get these uber powerful items was to pay a lot of money, like more than you would pay for an indie game, just to get a fucking chest for a game that's not even an indie game. It's a mobile game. All right, so there's that, right? Now, how else could they take your hard-earned money? Well, how about this? This is, this is like brainstorming in, in, you know, while they're sitting there in their office. They're like, how else could we take their money? Well, they're like, well, why don't we uh, make them pay to be revived? So you're going through a dungeon, and here's how this works. You're going through a dungeon, you get really far into the dungeon, 
and you're fighting the boss. And this is what happened to him. He got all the way to the, the boss and it's a big troll, right? Mm -hmm. Had a little trouble. His health was like really, really low and the, the health of the troll was almost gone and then the troll kills him, right? After that, it says, ooh, we're sorry. There's no save function in between. If you die, you have to go back and redo the entire fucking dungeon. Or you can pay right now to be revived where you are and then you can fight on. So he was so pissed that he actually paid the money to be revived and he killed that troll. And as soon as that happened, two more trolls popped out and immediately killed him. At which point they're like, now you have to start the entire dungeon all over again. But why don't you buy a legendary sword for $15 to make it a little easier for you? Hmm? Hmm. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, it's a great hmm. idea. Hmm. Here's the thing that really gets me. This game has been making hundreds of thousands of dollars in a very short amount yeah, of time. Yeah, it made like 50,000 in its first... I think 500,000, wasn't more. it? Let's scroll down. That's Where's the money? 500,000. Yeah, 500,000 in just a few days. $500,000 in a few days. Who's responsible for this? Who is paying for this shit? It's your fault that the companies think it's okay. If you keep doing it, of course they're going to take your money. $500,000 in a matter of a few days is a huge, is a huge amount of money. So you're training them and they're training you. If this stuff starts spilling over, a lot of people are like, this is not going to spill over to desktop. No way. No mm, way. It'll spill over to desktop. God. Guys, Bethesda, you were my favorite. You were my favorite back in the day. This, this is, this is. You were right the here. chosen one. This is it. This, this is it. And I've also got Morrowind <laughs> over there. The hell? Two of my favorite RPGs of all time sitting over here on my shelf. If any of this shit ends up in the Elder Scrolls 6, you're dead to me. Yeah. None of it. None of it. I'll have none of it. I'll go play The Outsider or one of these new games that's coming out. Yeah, Bioware's dead too. Games as a service. They're no longer games for fun. They are services. Yeah. That's something that EA is focusing on, and it looks like that's what Bethesda's focusing on right now with this shit. If they think that this is just a way they can get a little cash grab on mobile and, and trick some fools, and they're not planning on moving this, this stuff over to the PC, cool, but I'd... Even, even in, like, the new Fallout games and stuff, there's just a lot of ways that they can, like, grab a little money here and there with microtransactions. But this is beyond insidious. It's the worst thing I've seen. And even even on a mobile game standpoint, it's the worst thing I've seen. So, uh, Shotin yeah. says, uh, oh, we could run a D&D &D games like that. GMs would be rich or dead. We actually, <laughs> I actually had a joke about this a while a back. Um, writing a skit where it's, where it's, like, the DMs, like, sitting there and, and being like, so, uh... If you want a plus one sword, uh, it's gonna take you like three or four sessions of questing, or you can just give me five bucks right now. Like, oh, <laughs> your character's dead. Well, if you pay me ten dollars right now, I can revive your character right in the middle of this battle if you want. Oh, your cleric's out of spells. Well, for three ninety nine, you can recharge all those spells without having to take a long rest. <laughs> that would be. Uh, we need to make this skit. Yeah, it makes sense. It would. It would probably go viral. And I just took that skit writing class, so I know that most of my skits in the past were shit, mm. and now I know what to do. So anyway, yeah, Bethesda. Have you seen the new trailers for Samurai Showdown? I have not, and now I really want to, but what? we don't have a lot of time left. Yeah. So. so let's just move on then. Yeah. Doom and Animal Crossing, what the hell? Yes. Yeah, so this, did anyone need this mod? Yes. Everyone needs this mod. Let's get into so it then. So this is called... Hang on. Loud noise. Anyway, so this is the Mr. Friendly... Doom mod, which changes the entire game into an Animal Crossing style thing where you can like pick up items and stuff like that. And also all of the monsters and demons and stuff around all have names and will talk to you and talk to you about things that they need out of like, like here's Penfold. What, and, does, he, what does he need? Uh, I don't know. Let's see what Penfold Why is needs. the imp's name Penfold? That's I don't know. Well, here's Moth Dad. <laughs> Moth Dad? I'm running pretty low on battery charge. The other day, Strontinian was trying to tell me more. There were places like we could have a hmm. floor on top of another floor. I told her to lay it. Like, yeah, it's so it's just this like walking around, being friends, and all the combat has been replaced by being able to talk with one another and wow. stuff like that. It's... That's combat. yeah, Metallica? No. That's a CD with Metallica on it, apparently. <laughs> Break it! Yep. Sorry, guys, if you like Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. I guess we need this. But yeah, he, he stashed it. I thought he said he smashed it. I was excited. No. Got an inventory and everything. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty. It's very Animal Crossing-y. Like, like, sure. I mean, I, I would like to add in combat and turn this into an RPG. I like the inventory system and that sort of thing. But I guess they already made a game called Strife that does pretty much that. So, yeah. 
Moving right along. Mm -hmm. uh, Splinter Cell game. <coughs> Ubisoft is going to make it. Now, here's the thing that gets me. They, they were already working on something that was canceled. And then some of the team members left because they said, okay, well, this is, no, that's not this. The, the team members didn't leave, but they canceled this one because they wanted to go in a new direction to make it more of a service rather than a regular game, meaning they wanted to put in more microtransactions and mm. stuff. So, whoops. There goes, there goes Splinter Cell. Another game that everyone should be worried about, the next Dragon Age, because they're using, they're going to be developing this using the, um, the Anthem stuff. Which is why everyone is worried that it's just going to be another Anthem flop. <laughs> and members of the Dragon Age team have left the company. They're oh, like, good. they basically mm. were like, fuck this, we're out. Yeah. So that's always a good sign. Um, and they also mm -hmm. said that they wanted this one to be a shorter episodic game with more focus on microtransactions and ep like being able to oh, pay for like... shorter episodic. That means that they'll release new episodes that you'll have to pay exactly. even more money for. Uh, which is great because that means you won't get as much of a game for the same price as a full game right off the bat. But the, here's the way they spin this. It's designed, they've designed a game for continued storytelling after the main story, but they'll be releasing that in little increments here and there that you can buy, and that'll be great. I'm sure it'll be like just a a, a wonderful <laughs> DLC. Yeah, Tau, Tau is used. I, I'm right there with you, man. Like when, when I first started seeing stuff for Anthem, I was like, oh man, it this pretty. looks like it's going to be so cool and all that flying mechanics. And then the closer got, it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Never the, be excited about anything ever again. Well, guys, <laughs> here's what you need to do. Follow the people behind the game. Yeah. So a couple of guys from BioWare, some people from Capcom and some of the Ubisoft devs are now working on an RPG and this is going to be a multiplayer RPG because they're using the Spatial OS and they've combined that with the Unreal Engine for the graphics and everything else. But Spatial OS is not an MMO engine, but it allows it allows them to quickly and easily turn this into like a 100, 200 person multiplayer game. Yeah. So they can work on it that way. And Aaron Flynn is involved. So Aaron Flynn uh, was one of the directors behind, you guys ready for some games? Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3. And other big games. Um, mm. If you could bring up a list of all of his games, I don't think I did, but there, there's, those there's. are like come, some of the big ones, but he was involved in many other really popular, big, fun games sure. that were yeah. not about microtransactions. Follow the people who are making the games you like. Uh, the new Wolfenstein looks like fun. Yeah, and Wolfenstein Youngblood looks all right. I don't know. Kind of want to play it. Yeah. So. I, I, I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. Like, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, this is cool. Yeah, so uh, Steam has now started adding a off-topic update to their review system as all in light of all the Borderland review bombing that happened because people are giant babies. Um, it's on the Epic Store, though. I yeah. Mean, so that means so, all the other games suck. Yeah. Therefore, I take back what I said all those hours that I spent enjoying the game previous time i actually didn't enjoy it i hated it so the review system yeah. becomes a political tool and uh, mm -hmm. steam is now allowing people to um ignore political bullshit yep. or ignore re review bombs and stuff mm -hmm. so so now things like that are going to be related to off topic so anytime that they're like specifically angry because it's on epic store it's gonna be like that's okay it's over here now yeah that's yeah i'm, I'm actually very cool with that thanks a lot that's for doing good. that steam yeah that means i can get away with like all kinds of evil things, and then my games won't be uh, negatively affected. Yeah. Into that's, it. that's what I thought when I saw it. Yeah. How much can I get away with now? Everything. Let me see them real quick. Uh, this will probably help. What are we moving this over? There. Why? Okay. My shoulder's getting cut off. Oh. I, mean, I, I mean, like, I was had to, I'm like leaning in too much, and it was hurting okay. my neck bones. Uh, well, gotta preserve your neck bones. Uh, watch Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order reveal here. So I, I, it said EA, and I'm already like, yeah, this is this is. I'm so back and forth on this. I, they said EA. I, I can't. Yeah, EA is EA is involved. I, okay, I, no, that's I'm, what I'm already, scares I'm the out. shit out of me. EA has done some really terrible things to the Star Wars franchise in the past. Uh, ugh. Uh, I want. I, I put this up because I want to know what you guys think. I'm, like, I'm out. Like, I'm, I'm completely out. Is no. it is it worthy in even looking at, or does the EA title make it go? 
ew away, which is what EA stands for. I feel I like know. Ubisoft. Is, I feel like Ubisoft is a much better company than EA, and they're still a big AAA developer. But like, I yeah, I think of Ubisoft is a better company than EA. That's mm. just me. But you know, as soon as EA, I'm I'm completely out. Mm. Nope. It's, no, it's going to be a service. It's not going to be a game. <laughs> Tau says, wait till it's on the humble bundle. <laughs> I. I <laughs> I want to start. Um, mm-hmm. I, want, I want to start getting people just to use this regularly, where we ask if it's a game or if it's a service. Yeah. And because like that's even stuff that companies like EA have said like they want to be more focused on making services rather than games, services that keep on giving to them. So that way we can just easily identify it amongst ourselves on, mm-hmm. on forums and like online, being like, oh, is it a game? Meaning, is it like a traditional game that you go and play and have fun for hours and don't have to deal with bullshit microtransactions yeah. all the time? Or is it a service? And that way we can easily identify the ones that are just going to try to, you know, put up paywalls and restrict gameplay and that sort of thing. Yeah, so. but these guys are also involved in it. Yeah, so Titanfall 1 and 2 were great. Apex Legends is, is mm-hmm. fun and it's not, it's not as laden with microtransactions, but it's, there's, yeah. too much, there's too much EA going on this here. This is a double-edged sword, I think. I don't know. Or a triple edge, maybe even a quadruple edge sword. It's just like two swords put together with no handle. We'll, we'll, we'll wait and see, but I don't. Yeah. I don't expect this to be mm. to be good. This might be good though. So Octopath Traveler is coming to PC on June seventh. For all of you that don't have switches and and want a JRPG and want a JRPG, uh, made by Squeenix with some. I have played this graphics. game. I own this game. I never made it through it completely because I found other stuff. This game is very, very JRPG to the point that it had a little too much talking for me in it. I know Act 2 takes over and there's much less talking, a lot more action, yeah. but getting through all the thing where you meet all eight people and stuff and having to play through each of their storylines and thing is like, Ugh, I just wanted to play a video game, <laughs> not watch a movie. Some, like <laughs> Some people want the, yeah. that Final Fantasy style. Like, yeah. Like, I, I like JRPGs, but this one had maybe a little too much talking in it for me. But that's just me. I don't know. Let us know what you guys this think. This is a talking. Are, are, you into the, yeah. are you into the story or what? No. All right, we got, a, we got five more minutes, guys. Awesome. Great. Trine. Yes, we got some Trine 4 gameplay here. Hell yes. Yes. It, they're moving it back to 2D instead of the 3D game that was the mess that Trine 3 was. It was... If Trine 3 came out all by itself as a standalone, it would have been an okay game, but after playing mm-hmm. Trine 1 and Trine 2, it was so underwhelming to be like, no, I'm so restricted right now with this. It felt weird to be in a 3D world, but more restricted in a 2D world. That's how it felt when I played it. Like, yeah. it didn't feel right. Like, why did the 2D world feel so much more fluid and, and open? Weird. Mm. So, uh, yeah, they've gone back to what made the, the series good. If you haven't played Trine before, you are missing out. Shame about missing the house. Out. Get a friend, though, when you play it. Yeah, it's Must much better multiplayer. So much more fun multiplayer than a single player. No. Uh, full of our DM's here. <laughs> yes, and yes. Come on in. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, looks great. We got some outward review. So this I wanted to bring up because we talked a lot about role-playing games and, and the big AAA games that have just turned into services. Mm-hmm. Outward is getting uh, good reviews. It's actually getting mixed reviews from different different publications, but it, it seems like it's going to be a rewarding game. And I like the fact that, that in everything I've read, I have not picked this up yet, but this is something I'm trying to figure out if I can make some time to play. Mm. Uh, a lot of the reports are that like everything is rewarding. Like traveling is rewarding, exploring is rewarding, combat is, is uh, winning a combat is, re- is rewarding. So that's, that's yeah. the, what an RPG should be. Like you, yeah, it, you, you do some things and you get a reward. It's like, yeah. I agree with uh, Mike Hickey. That Risk of Rain. Risk of Rain 2 is dope. Yep. Holy God, man. Let me tell you right now. I there is no what we're playing what we're playing this week because all I have been doing this week is playing Risk of Rain 2 and it doesn't need my help. <laughs> like it it is for the fact that it's an alpha right now and everything and is still just so damn good already. I've done single player games, I've done multiplayer games, I've done, you know, all the way up to four people and everything like that. Every single time it's fun as long as you have a group of like-minded individuals that are willing to share and not be loot goblins at each other. Like, it, it's so much fucking fun, and it's really exciting because they're in alpha. So they're just going to keep on releasing a bunch of stuff. So by the time the game is actually ready to be really officially it. released, it's going to just be so damn good. And the music is already just I, I need to play so it. good, on point. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, other things that we need, really need to play, like I, I think Outwards is my number one game that I want to play that's out right now. I, I just have to make time to play it. But yeah. 
when this comes out, I also have to play this. This reminds me a lot of the old Painkiller game, but it's, you know, brand new fancy graphics and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, come on. Magic, mages, and... Guns. Old school guns, yeah. Yeah, I'm into this. Looks like this a ton looks, of fun. This looks pretty rad. It, I mean, it's just going to be... Yeah, I want to check it old out. Old school fun, you know. <laughs> I definitely want to check it out. All right. Sorry All right. we're moving fast, but we got a Star Trek game to play. Yeah. So... Okay, make that go away. Go away. Thank there you. Go. So... Let's see what's going on in Portland, shall we? I actually got to look at this earlier today. Oh, did you? Okay, there's, okay. there's some good ones here. All right, let's, let's get down to it. Uh... uh uh, oh, this one's new. Call reporting of a man got out of a parked van, took all of his clothes off, threw the clothes on the ground, and went back into the van. The caller says the van is now bouncing. So? Why did you call the police? Yeah. Is, there, is anything illegal in, about that? In, 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 aren't you allowed to be nude in Portland? Uh, I think so. In Oregon, I know you're allowed yeah. to be nude. I don't know. I think Portland might have changed the rules because people were doing dumb things like mm. running around with hammers up their butt or whatever. Mm. Machetes up their butt. Uh... Police to Southwest to Wilger Boulevard. Caller reporting of a female pedestrian hit caller's car with her body and caused severe damage to the car. I think someone just got run over and they're and and they're one of these like sociopaths who drives like a Corvette or whatever and is like you dented my fender you son of a bitch. Yeah. Mm. That's probably what happened. Uh, okay. I decided that's what's happened. Yeah. Caller reporting of a 10-year-old female standing on the corner playing on a cell phone. Caller says the girl looks freaked out. She's playing Blades. What the... F like, why the fuck was someone walking by and being like, Oh my god, that girl does... She looks freaked out. I better call the police. That's just a 10-year-old standing there. Oh my god. Every, every like, week when we do this, I'm more worried about the people calling the police than I'm worried about the people who yeah, are calling right? the police on. Every week, it's like, who the fuck is calling yeah, the police like, over this stuff? Like like last year when they like call the police, the girl's wearing a short skirt. I'm pretty sure that's a hooker. Like, it was just a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what is up with the people who go to the police uh, So here? this one's kind of funny, kind of not, because it's about suicide, but... Suicide's always uh, funny. Police to Northwest 3rd in Flanders. Call reports he's feeling very suicidal, and when, disp when asked by dispatch if he has any weapons, he replied that he's a trained martial artist and every part of him is a weapon. <laughs> I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to fucking do it. That's not funny. Uh... <laughs> Uh, oh, here we go. This one's great. So, Portland, East units responding to a disturbance at home. Mother versus teenager. Mother calling 911 to report she doesn't want him anymore. Says he's not doing good in school and is tearing up his room. Wants police to take him away. Officers intelligently contacting DHS. Like, oof. Oh, God, here it is. Oof. The drama. I'm just doing my drama. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, you're so, so oh man, okay, drama. we've guys, we've we've gone beyond machetes today as well. Report of a suspicious suspicious subject causing a disturbance in the community room at the tower apartments, described as a white male carrying a trident. <laughs> I retweeted this the other day, and and Barnacles was like, "Is there a, a festival or is there a, a convention going on?" I was like. Dude, this is Portland. Yeah. Aquaman is here <laughs> this is causing a scene. Every day. This is every day in Portland. Um, God, that, that, that's where you like, you have to figure out, is that person awesome or are they a dweeb? Report. Because that's when the nerd, yeah. that's, that's when a nerd evolves or devolves. Or, you know, like when they go into a room with a trident and cause a scene, they could either go hard to the, like, this guy is awesome or they could go hard to the, this guy is a, no longer a nerd. He is a dweeb. Yeah. Uh, police to Southwest 10th and Yamhill report of a high female hanging from a light post with her pants around her ankles. <laughs> call her concerned because she is not dressed for the weather. That's exactly why I would call. <laughs> like, oh, she has her pants around her ankle. Also, it's pretty chilly out, so <laughs> I'm be, worried. It's gotta be like 50 degrees. She's gonna catch a crotch cold. <laughs> is that a thing? Uh, I hope you guys all catch crotch colds. That's the end of the show today. I think. Unless oh, there's one, oh no, more. Here's, one Okay, there's one okay, more. Okay, here's, here's a fucking end, white people. My ending people. was so good. All right, Here we people. go. Uh, call reports of a homeless male is standing in a park and that he's not causing disturbance, but the caller thinks he shouldn't be seen. That's some gentrification bullshit right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dude, get out and share your fucking invisibility potion, man. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Final one. This doesn't end. Uh, <laughs> report of a male beating on a dumpster with a machete and a lead pipe. That guy took feet proficiency so he could dual wield with his machete and lead pipe. <laughs> I like Portland. Yeah. It's great. Uh, 
Also, reports of a male subject swinging a machete around in the air, not threatening anybody. Guys, God. we are back to machetes. Spring is in the air. Spring machetes are back. Yep. <laughs> wow, what a yeah. place. Well, then. Mm-hmm. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for so much. This has been a real, real just great day. Machetes. Yes. <laughs>